on Fixing the Money Thing. God gives seed to the sower, bread for eating, and the Bible says he'll increase your store of seed. Why does he want you to have more seed? He wants you to act like he does. He wants you to be generous on every occasion because it opens people's hearts. God's empowering you to prosper. As you know, I always say buckle your seat belts. It's great to have you here. Great to have you with us right now online. I'm Gary Cassie, and we're going to jump into our session here this afternoon. And I trust it'll help you a lot. But anyway, I got a phrase I want to get, let you know. First off, taking territory is what we're all about. And just add a hashtag there, a little dot of, with God. Taking territory with God. That's how it gets done. And I want to give you this phrase you may not have thought about. God needs money. I know you, I, people think, you know, I need God's money, right? I need God to help me with my money. He wants to. But I only understand God needs money. Did you know that? God needs money. He's in a major rescue effort right now. He sent Jesus into the earth for you. And it takes a lot of money to, to accomplish that. You know, you're seeing us over uh, TV. We, we spend millions a year for TV. We're in a building that costs us millions. You probably drive to work in a car that costs out. I mean, everything costs money. And so we're going to talk about that today. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, good. I don't know how many years ago it's been, but we were going out to dinner and a waitress was very pregnant. You could tell she was due very soon. And I just felt led to give her a very a large tip, a large tip. And she didn't look at it. She went back in the kitchen, you know, wherever they got the you know, tea and coffee and things. She came back out with tears literally shaking and began to thank us for this tip and began to open up to us her life. Now, we did not say anything to her. She opened up her life, the problems she was having and the need she had in her life and, you know, the, the problems she's having financially. And we got to share Christ with her and we got to pray with her. We did not even mention a scripture. We just gave her a tip. And I want to talk to you about being generous. I want to talk to you about generosity and how it opens the heart of people and the goodness of God. You know, my dad never said once that I can ever remember that he loved me growing up. It was not until I was 27 years old when I was graduating from college that my mother insisted that my dad tell me that he loved me. He couldn't do it. My mother is saying, you know, you mean you can't even tell your, your own son that you love him? My dad, he wouldn't say it. Finally, in desperation, my mom in tears, my dad finally said that he loved me. Now, I didn't count that one. <laughs> I was good to hear it, but I didn't count it. You know, I just, you know, I didn't count it. But after we were married, we had some bills we couldn't pay. We had an IRS bill I couldn't pay, and I was nervous about it. You know, we were newly married. I didn't understand business really and taxes. And I owed $4,000 to the IRS. At that time, that was a ton of money. Just, I didn't have it. At that time, we were going home to visit Ohio, visit my parents, and my dad asked how I was doing, and I mentioned the IRS bill. And my dad very casually said, oh, that's not a problem. He pulled out his checkbook and wrote a check out for $4,000 and handed it to me. And he says, as long as I have it, you know, I'm willing to help. That took me so off guard. I remember that day that in tears, I realized my dad loved me. You know, my dad never expressed his love with words, but he would occasionally, you could see glimpses of his heart. And when he wrote that check out, that generosity, I saw my dad's heart. Generosity lets you see the person's heart. It opens people up. I saw my dad's heart. Romans chapter 2 verse 4 says this, or do you show contempt for the riches of God's kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended, pay attention to that, is intended to lead you to repentance? Now, think about what God's saying. His goodness is to lead you. It's, it's, it's intentional. His goodness is intentional to reveal God's heart. 
Like my dad on that day, he couldn't tell me he loved me, but he was generous and I saw my dad's heart. In fact, that day I felt a love for my father, you know, I, his generosity touched my heart and made me have a greater love for him. And so being generous, write this down, being generous is acting like God does. Being generous is acting like God does. Now, I'm teaching out of my brand new book today. It's the fifth in the series of the Financial Revolution series, which I believe uh, has gone around the world. Uh, so it's, it's available right now. If you like a copy, I want to just let you know. We're re- I'm releasing it as we speak right now, my fifth book. But anyway, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. Now, an ambassador, you probably know what an ambassador is. Definition of an ambassador is a diplomatic official of the highest rank appointed, accredited as representative by one government to another sovereign government. An authorized messenger or representative. Now, we are representing the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors in this earth realm. And as so, we should act as God does. We need to be generous. We need to represent his heart towards people. When people think of you, they should think of a generous person. They should think of people being, of of you being generous. Unfortunately, a lot of people can't be generous. 57% of people don't have $1,000 in the bank, 57%. 44% cannot pay $400 a month, uh, $400 uh, just cash. 23% of Americans are not even paying their monthly expenses or falling further and further in debt every month. America is in trouble financially. You know, there are traps and schemes to take your money. 1.2 billion active credit cards in the U.S. 7 to 8 billion credit card offers mailed out every year. Someone wants you in debt. Someone doesn't want you free. Someone doesn't want you to be generous and free to serve God. You know, it's not just the banks and retailers that are setting, setting schemes up to capture your money. Satan also knows that if you had money, you'd be effective. And he also knows you might reach your destiny and have an impact in his kingdom. You know, we have a story in Luke chapter 5, which I've taught out so many times, of Peter, James, and John fishing all night, catching nothing. Luke chapter 5, verse 5, they caught nothing all night. Jesus borrows Peter's boat, goes out and fishes. Jesus, using the boat, preaches from the shore and then tells Peter to let down the nets. Verse 5, Peter says, Master, we've worked hard all night, haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they'd done so, they caught such a large number of fish, their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full, they began to sink. Now, when Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he and all of his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, their partners. Then Jesus said this to to Peter, who's Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll fish for people. So they pulled their boats up, left everything and followed Jesus. Now, I would suggest this to you today. Obviously, Jesus caught their attention with this catch of fish. But I would suggest to you today, this whole story is not really about the fish. This story is about the people. You see, once provision was taken care of, once Peter saw that the kingdom operated at a level that was so beyond his understanding and provided such a catch of fish, Jesus said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I see more fish than I've ever seen before. I don't have to be afraid. You follow me? He's a fisherman. It's his livelihood. Jesus is going to give him a commandment, but not without evidence. He says, he didn't say, come and follow me instantly. Let's go change gears. Let's go catch fish. He said, here's the fish more than you've ever seen caught. You're going to catch people. The story is really not about fish. 
It's really about God's heart for people. It's really about God's intentional pursuit of people, of his love for people, his love to rejoin and capture what was lost at the garden, to bring people back into his kingdom, to bring people back in line with their created purpose and not running after money and not running after false illusions of what purpose really is. No, Peter, let me show you what life really is. We're going after people. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.